Scientists and experts in Singapore are working with counterparts from 50 other countries to develop a global DNA database that can help hospitals identify diseases faster and more accurately. And experts who are gathered for a four-day conference here say that with such a system, countries can also better control human and animal diseases. And the comment comes on the back of several food poisoning cases in Singapore. Jundo tells us more. A food poisoning case at this outlet last year left one dead and many hospitalized. Investigations later found various types of bacteria at the restaurant, including salmonella, commonly found in contaminated water or food. Such foodborne diseases are on the rise in Singapore. There have been more than 900 salmonella cases so far this year, up from the over 650 incidents in the same period last year. And to help combat similar outbreaks in future, experts have proposed that an international DNA database be set up. It will contain real-time details of all known viruses, bacteria, fungi and parasites around the world, allowing for quick identification and treatment for patients. When there's an outbreak at disaster and it's in the public, then you have to find the source very, very quickly. And since uh, DNA sequencing is a fingerprint, you can use that fingerprint to find out the salmonella that is in the patient. Is that the same that is in this chicken? So if you have the fingerprint, you can actually document where it comes from and then you can stop the outbreak. Experts say current methods of disease identification can take days. Details are also stored in different formats in each country, making information exchange a challenge. It's just that if you, if you speak Chinese and I speak English and there's no translation, maybe it's hard to retrieve information. You can, but with great difficulty, and maybe it's just, just uh, not worth the time to do it. And with the global increase in air travel, experts say the database can also be useful in monitoring and controlling the spread of infectious diseases. And for more on the disease DNA database, we're joined by NTU's Professor Jürgen Schlund. Uh, Prof, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Uh, so you quite uh, nicely captured the essence of this database, just now calling it um, a, a kind of repository of fingerprints, yes. so to speak. Um, we know that this will contain all DNA sequences of all microorganisms. Uh, just break it down for us. What does this mean for us, really? So in the end, you will end up with something that will give us a totally new way of understanding microorganisms, so bacteria, virus, and so on. So the last 150 years, we've been using a method that was, was developed by Pasteur in 1872. Uh, that's the guy we, we called Pasteurization after. So he was the first guy to do that. We've been, we've been doing microbiology with his methods for 150 years. Now we are going to the next generation, which is that we understand the genome instead. So the DNA in the microorganism, they have DNA just like us. So you can sequence that now with this new methodology. Uh, it's much faster, it's much more correct, and it gives, like you say, a fingerprint. So it means that we can immediately find out if the bacteria in the patient is linked to the chicken or to the cow or to the salad mm. or what it's linked to because of the fingerprinting technique. Okay, so that is... So the database is important um, for us to understand that. But how do we grow this database that you have? Yeah, and the, yeah, that's a very important thing. And so, so it's not like a database that we have. Actually, there are databases now. There's a big one in the U.S., big one in Europe, big one in Japan, and they are linked together. But they are not active databases. What we are suggesting, the uh, researchers that are meeting here in Singapore these three, four days, we are suggesting that we should have an active database, not a passive database, it's not just a library, but an active one, so that if I have a new microorganism, I do the sequencing, I upload it to the database, and then I get an answer back. So it has to be active. Mm. So that is not existing yet. So we, what we are suggesting is we should discuss that. And we meaning not only the nerds and the scientists, but the political level have to discuss this. Because if we don't get agreement between countries, that we want to do this, then it's not going to happen. Mm. So bring us back to the context for this database. I mean, we're seeing viruses come out left, right and centre. We're seeing new outbreaks, you know, emerge. Uh, does this take on more urgency then, do you think? Yeah, I'm, I think that many countries uh, ever since, you know, SARS and avian flu, 
uh, and also human flu, pig flu, uh, they, they, there was a lot of discussion between countries saying, okay, but there is an urgency because we, we see these global threats, you know, and the only way that you can really deal with global th threats is you work together between the different countries mm. and you have a system so you can compare if the avian flu in Singapore is the same as the one in Copenhagen or it's a different one, you know, so when we have this methodology, we are saying we should really use it in a global way mm. because that would be good for the world, but it would also be good for all countries, including, by the way, developing countries. And we have a lot of people from developing countries at this meeting here, supported by WHO and FAO, the World Health Organization and Food and Agriculture mm. Organization. Okay, we understand that there are outbreaks can be solved using next generation sequencing. Yeah. So one example I'm giving here is a microorganism known as the Group B um, Streptococcus, yeah. which uh, causes, you know, the which caused the 2015 um, foodborne disease outbreak here. Question is, how can identifying this microorganism actually translate into preventing this particular type of disease? Because if we start to understand where it comes from, so you have patients that got sick, very sick with this one, uh, and we never had that as a, a foodborne uh, bacterium before, never. That's the first time in the world that this has been documented as a foodborne bacterium. So if you have that uh, fingerprint of that one, you can find out where it exactly comes from. And that's also what they did here in Singapore. So they found out it came from the raw fish, raw freshwater fish, and then they could stop the outbreak like that. But actually, we can now go in, or we, the people who are researching this, can go in and find the old strains that you have in China and other places and find out that you actually have the same mm -hmm. dangerous strain of bacterium there. So most likely you have had outbreaks in these places that you never solved. Mm. This happens all the time. So the information from Singapore with the fingerprint can be used to go to other countries and say, you most likely have had the same types of outbreak. You should prevent them by doing this or that. Right, so that is what sharing the information and how you can actually fight the disease. And that is why it's so important for us to have this database, this fingerprint database. Yeah. But thank you so much, um, Professor Jürgen um, Schlitt, for coming in and speaking to us. Okay, you're welcome.